Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Reasonable Price Prediction, the series where we try to figure out where your favorite altcoins could be headed. Now today we are looking at Chainlink as requested again in the comments. And like our previous video that came out yesterday with File, Filecoin, we're going to be taking a much more macro view, long-term look at the coin. Because I think while it is sometimes interesting to get bogged down in very condensed time frames and see what happened uh, during the previous cycle during that same time frame and go into the nitty gritties. I also think that it is very important to just zoom out and see what stage of the cycle we're in so that you can prepare for the coming stages. Now we will also have a little zoom in and take a look at what we're currently going through and compare them, but I just wanna sort of point out the similarities Link first launches back in 2017, end of 2017, Q3, Q4, and basically trades sideways to an extreme level up until 2019, or even Q2 of 2019, where it finally breaks out of this zone of 50 cents as a high and 20 cents as a low. And this is where Link moves past its previous high of 50 cents and puts in a support of $1.50. So another big jump from Link, and then even sets a high of about $4.50. And again, it spends a while within this range, not as long as the first sort of oscillation period that we had here back in 2018, 2019, but it basically does spend about a year also in this range. And what's important to know is that we have the halving coming up. And again, like a lot of altcoins, once Link breaks through the halving, once the halving passes, Link takes off and we see it kind of go parabolic. It goes from the local resistance of $4, $4.50, all the way up to $20. And that's in the space of about two or three months. And another thing to point out now is the current, the level that we made it up to, that $20 level that Link exploded up to, is now the current level that we're at, and is just about a third of the all-time high. It's, yeah, about minus 60% from the all-time high to where we currently are, the all-time high being about 55 US dollars, but basically we, we trend up for a while. And interestingly enough, Link puts in its all time high of May 2021, like a lot of altcoins, but like a few other altcoins, it doesn't just collapse and crumble and turn to dust. Now there are big sell-offs, like it goes from $55 down to the next local high of $35. And it does double top there, but that's basically a distribution phase. You know, we have our top, and then we revisit this top twice, we can't break above. That's just a, a redistribution phase, kind of plain and simple. And while in these times it was hard to see that coming or, or see that playing out, now that we have the 2020 vision of hindsight, that's very clearly what it was. And then of course we went into our better run, but interestingly, Link didn't spend a lot of time going down. And while it did drop a lot, like if we go from all time high to all time or cycle low, Link drops 90%. But for an old coin, that's not terrible. It also didn't spend as long going down. Like we, we saw a lot of altcoins had their first sort of bit of relief during 2023, the start of 2023, back when FTX was still collapsing. That was November time. This red candle here was FTX. You had Luna here in sort of mid 2020 that also caused a big collapse. But Link held, held the line and it didn't drop down below this $5.50 support that it set straight off the bat. So what we saw with Link is that once it put in a low, and it put in a low pretty quickly compared to a lot of altcoins, it didn't really break down below. No matter what bad news you threw at it, like FTX was catastrophic. That's basically a, you know, extinction level event. Not extinction, but you know what I mean? It's a pretty bad thing to happen in the crypto space, followed by Terra Luna, followed by also the uh, Celsius, and also the Silicon Valley banks. There was a lot of bad news in 2022 and 2023 and Link just went up and down. It didn't It didn't bother Link. Link just kept doing its thing, stayed in its own lane. And that really interests me because aside from USDT or USDC, like a stable coin or PAXG that's like linked to an asset that wouldn't really be affected by a big crypto issue, Link did kind of good. And we've spoken before about how Link is or has been a good hedge during bad times in the crypto space, or at least times when not much is happening. And when we swap to the Bitcoin pair, you'll see what I mean, because it does outperform Bitcoin in a lot of ways during certain times of the market cycle. But ultimately, for about a year and a half, during all this terrible news, Link just trades sideways. 
and it trades in a range of basically 70%. And realistically, it's not even 70% because it only wicks up here once or twice. And then as time goes on, it shrinks and the volatility reduces. We talked about this before in other videos, but what basically played out here was a bit of a wike off. We put in our high, we put in our low, lower high, lower high, lower low, and then explode out, basically a wike off. Uh, go check out my other videos if you want me to explain that more in depth, or if you're not quite sure what a wike off is, but it is basically a wike off. And then of course, after that, we've been in our current bullish trend ever since September. So like the rest of the altcoin space, Link started rallying around a similar time. You could argue it was June when Link started rallying. And you, you know what, it's not really worth debating that to be honest with you. Link had a good pump during June. It also had a good one back in January of 2023. It, it doesn't really matter. And that's another interesting thing actually, sort of during this time where a lot of altcoins were suddenly taking off and they were getting, you know, two X's, three X's, like Cardano and Avalanche and all these other cryptos, Link still did not move up. So it did actually kind of stabilize as an asset during this time. And while the fluctuation was still, you know, extreme, for a cryptocurrency, if you want to be exposed to some upside, some downside, Link was a good asset to hold during this time. Now, Bitcoin would have been much better because Bitcoin experienced a much stronger move up and 2023 was a very good year for Bitcoin. But nobody knew that it would be. And Historically, it, it shouldn't have been for Bitcoin. Historically, during the halving year, Bitcoin spends two quarters going up, two quarters going down, and ultimately ends somewhere above where it came into 2023 or the halving year, but not by a great deal. So last halving year was definitely an outlier in the cycle patterns that we've seen in Bitcoin. So if you'd have seen Link before and compared it and seen, oh, well, it holds very well against Bitcoin during these times of um, bad price action, I think I'll just put my money in Link. You would have actually missed out, but that's only because Bitcoin played completely differently. This time, if, if you'd have bought Link here instead of Bitcoin, you would have preserved your value of your portfolio against US dollar and Satoshi in a much better way. But what's interesting now and also important to take note of is that we've probably moved out of this phase. Like I would link this area here where this first white line occurs to this first white line here after the 2020 bear run year or during even for for link of course because that was the year that link spent half of its time in here we then what we see have a strong move to the upside again we've seen a bit of a strong move to the upside not the same proportion this move went from the initial low to the initial high it was about a 10x so a lot of a um, you know percentage move and if we take it from this low to the local high we can see it's a quarter of that so not as strong at all but that's okay and as these cryptos get older and their market caps grow, you can expect for their price volatility to shrink. But the bullish things that you still want to look for is how far away is Link from its all time high during these times when altcoins should really be testing or making a move towards the upside to show that they're still relevant. And this is a good check with altcoins. It's not a make or break, but it is definitely worth looking into. Has your altcoin gotten close to its all time high? And now close is a word that can mean a lot of things. Like for me, I would consider this a strong move and Link has made made it close to its all-time high, even though it's still 60% below it. And it would take a 150% move, 160% move to reach its all-time high. But for an altcoin, a 150% move, a 1.2.5 a X or whatever is not difficult. Altcoins can do them overnight. Um, and I'm not saying that, you know, that's what you should expect, but historically that has what happened, has happened. And if we see another move like this here that we could expect from Link, where we go from our low and bring it up to our high and we get another 10X move, if we expect another 250X move from a low that we could potentially put in at this white line, so assuming that we're going from this low here to this high and this low is sort of the same area that we come back to if we move a quarter of a 10x 2.5x link is at its all-time high from this low so i'm not saying that has to play out but it is sort of lining up in a way that would make it look like that is going to happen and when did this move take place it took place just before the halving now this might not play out the same way because we're kind of right before the halving right now and we haven't had a huge move up from Rune, not Rune, excuse me, Link, and we haven't touched this low again. We haven't come down to visit that low. Maybe that won't happen. I mean, if we take a look here, when we had our first strong move up, we came down to our bull market support band and went below. 
And here, when we zoom in, we came up to our bull market support band and bounced off. So it could be just a more bullish time. Maybe sort of, I've been a bit too bearish and I've been expecting a lot of stuff to play out like they did last time, which could have been a much more bearish market. And now that you have all these institutions moving into Bitcoin and crypto and it's not just seen as scams, maybe it still is, but to me, it's seen a lot less as scams. I feel like there's still a lot of scammers in the space, but that sentiment has drifted a bit and people are actually seeing that there is some use in some cryptocurrencies because they're being used by actual businesses and actual institutions. And they're wanted, they're, they're needed by these institutions to function more efficiently. So maybe I shouldn't expect this sort of bearish back and forth and oscillation in a range before the halving. Maybe Link will just blast straight through. Again, it kind of depends on what the crypto space does. And if the Bitcoin ETF, like it has, keeps seeing serious demand and makes these market makers move into the market and buy more Bitcoin so that they can hold it and sell it to their shareholders or their investors, that's going to be very bullish for the whole crypto space in general. Because during these times, as Bitcoin goes up, people start taking profits, but instead of just taking profits and leaving the space, they move them down the risk curve. And Chainlink is further down that risk curve. So most likely money that goes into Bitcoin finds its way into Ethereum, and then it finds its way into alts like Cardano, Avalanche, Solana, Filecoin, Rune, and of course, Chainlink. So honestly, I don't know where it's going next. Like I've never known where a coin is going next, but to make an educated guess, it is difficult. We could oscillate within a range. We could just go straight up. It's really difficult. Another thing to point out as well, before I move on to the Bitcoin pair and where I think the price will go, this move here, this slope, is more or less identical to the degree that this slope is moving in. Now they are slightly different, but it is more or less the same degree, same angle. So maybe next cycle when Chainlink is sort of in another distribution phase like this, it might be the same as whatever this slope becomes. Again, the second slope uh, has a similar gradient as the first slope of the next cycle. That's just something completely throwaway, could be absolute cod's wallop, uh, but just something that I noticed. Again, doesn't really hold any weight. Where I think Chainlink could go, again, the bull market, it's gonna be a very bullish time and I don't expect huge moves from Chainlink, but I can see it moving to somewhere around the $100 level. Assuming we get the sort of 2 and 2.5x move and we get back to this all-time high of $50. I think during a bull run, what we saw from that all-time high up to the next one was a 150% move. And if we're at this level here and we take another 150% move, we are moving quite quite high up. You know, a 100% move would put us well, you know, well above $100. And now I think we will have diminishing returns. Like I always say, we'll probably have diminishing returns but I also think that they won't be as diminished when it's at the peak of the bull run. So a 100% move from our all time high, basically a 2X from $55 puts us about $110. Assuming that it's not 100% exactly and that there is serious resistance at $90 and $100, I would be planning to sell my chain link somewhere below $100. And another bit of advice for you guys before I move to the Bitcoin pair is when you're setting these sell levels, don't set them for exactly $100. If you think Chainlink is going to reach $100 in the next bull run, set your sell price for $97.50 because there's, there's a much, much, much bigger chance that Chainlink will wick to $98, $99.20, but not quite reach that $100. And there's probably a lot of sell pressure at that $100. So your sell order at $100 is at the back of a very long queue and there's a good chance that it doesn't get executed. So sacrifice one or two dollars, you know, like a whatever it is, a five, six percent extra move for the guarantee or a greater chance to sell your crypto. Uh, just a bit of advice there that I found has served me very well. So yeah, moving to the Bitcoin pair, we can see same chart as before. I do like this chart a lot and I want to stay on the pulse of this one because I think it's really interesting. Again, breaking it down very quickly, what we see is when Chainlink launches, sort of oscillates within a very wide range. And again, first few months, you can kind of ignore, it's all speculation at that point. Once it finds its feet, it slowly trends downwards. This is from 2018 onwards. So if we move to 2022, we can see that same thing happens. Chainlink trades down all the way until 2023, bit of a discrepancy there. But mid 2018, Chainlink picks up and it goes into its really strong rally against Bitcoin. But what's really interesting 
is that by mid 2020, Q3 2020, Chainlink has peaked out on its Bitcoin pair. So during these not so great times, now they were good times, the asset was slowly moving up, the crypto space was slowly gaining value over the long term. Chainlink was really outperforming the market. And again, this was because there was a series of bad events. 2017 bull run, you have your 2018 poor year where that's basically the bear market. 2019 is pre-halving year. Historically, that's quite a poor year for the crypto space in general. And a lot of altcoins suffer and Bitcoin struggles to close the year at a positive. Chainlink well outperforms Bitcoin during this difficult time. And even in 2020 and after the halving, Chainlink gets a strong leg up and it peaks just a few months after the halving, which is very interesting. And then we see it move into a downward trend. Now there's two ways this can go. We can either see Chainlink put in a good two, two and a half, one and a half years of positive price movements over these not bearish times, but historically not bullish times either. They could be bullish times this time, but historically they're usually a bit on the fence a bit. We see ups and we see downs. Chainlink can either continue to ride up on its Bitcoin pair through this period up until a few months after the halving and then suddenly drop off like we saw here and basically enter a downward trend into 2021. So we could see something like Chainlink rally up basically until 2025 and then we see a bit of a pullback or it could be three, four months after the halving, which is in April, which would put us into around August time. Chainlink just gives up the ghost and puts in its all time high, not its all time high, or potentially an all time high, but it puts in its high for that cycle on the Bitcoin pair. It's something that is very interesting to me. And um, I will draw in these Bitcoin. Actually, I'll, I'll do that now. Uh, I'll make a jump cut to the, uh, with the Bitcoin lines there. Here we go back again, got the lines here, obviously the halving dates being shown off. We can see that basically a few months after the halving takes place from May to August, Bitcoin rallies up and that's where it puts in its high of early August, basically. So more or less three months exactly after the halving. If we go three months from where the halving is due to take place, which is April, that means that again, not that things have to play out the same, but if they're going to play out in a very similar manner, July will be when link tops out. And another interesting thing that I want to check or show you guys, sorry, is if you go, you know, 44 weeks back from where the halving took place, if we go about 44 weeks back, we can see that Chainlink is more or less at the same price as where it was. So it will have roughly the same amount of time going up if it wants to play out and end at a similar time, three months after the halving or top out three months after the halving. So it starts at a similar price at the same time frame of where it should be. So we literally could see a copy and paste of from here on upwards up until this peak, meaning that we would most likely return to a similar level on link on its Bitcoin pair. And if we draw that out, that would leave link at somewhere around 15,000 Satoshis. I'm going to put that in red to show that it's a resistance, but potentially we could see this three months after the halving. So roughly five and a half months. But again, that is speculation and more or less what I want to cover in today's video. So if you liked it, leave a like. If you didn't leave a dislike, comment down below what you think. Will Chainlink top out here or will it blow past or will it even reach it at all? Let me know what videos you guys want next and also consider checking out Fairdesk. It's an exchange. And if you use the link in the description, not only do you help out the channel, but you get a deposit bonus and reduced fees. And I find when the bull run comes, it's always good to have multiple exchanges because if one goes down and you need to be able to trade your funds, you're going to be missing out on serious gains if it's down for a day or two and you know your all-time high is now 20% of a move away or the high that you wanted to sell at. So always have multiple exchanges and now is the time to make them when you don't have to worry about KYC signups and all this stuff. So thanks again very much for watching guys. Take care and peace.